Hello my viewers. Yes, you see right. This is serious gardening equipment review and some tear down, of course. Actually, I never needed solar powered garden lights, but yesterday I saw these and they were really cheap, so I couldn't help myself and bring these home. Okay, so each light has a stainless, stainless steel and uh, this steel is so cheap and thin that I actually cut my finger a bit with it. Uh, maybe they forgot to add uh, cutting edge technology. Uh, automatically turn on at dusk, each with uh, one long life LED. Uh, long life because it's so low power, at least uh, the LED is cool, fine. Uh, high quality solar panel, yeah, of course. And splash proof, so it can withstand raining on the garden. Hmm, great idea, actually. Yeah, splash proof, that's a killer feature. These lights can be taken apart in three pieces, or maybe four. And each light has its own switch to turn it off and on. And here you can see how the lights uh, work and turn on when the sun goes down. And apparently you can see that this light is some kind of broken. Uh, it has totally different light sensitivity. It, it uh, turns off on the daylight, but it has a re really different sensitivity than in the other lights. So I'll take a look and maybe find a way how to tune this sensitivity a bit. And this will be a good excuse to turn this apart. Okay, so let's get this light apart. I turn it off so it stops. And I really uh, don't expect any interesting electronics parts inside. So maybe one or two tra transistors, some resistors, maybe diode, yeah. They say that uh, there's a user replaceable battery inside. Uh, I wonder what kind of battery it will be. Okay, so okay, we're in, and a lot of hot glue inside. Yeah, that's how you do it. And AAA battery. Let's turn the battery over and see the capacity. Of course, the real capacity will be uh, totally different. Okay. 150 milliamp hours. Yeah, I won't trust this. So, this video seems to be sh shorter than expected. Uh, I was hoping that there will be a few more parts and not this single chip solution. But uh, I will try to find if there's a way to figure out what's wrong with this light. So I took uh, two another lights apart and I will now compare uh, the values and voltages uh, with the wrong light. So the first thing I will do, I measure the battery voltage. So the faulty one has 1.3 volts, the good one's 1.3, the second good one has, come on, also 1.3. So batteries are charged equally, so I don't expect a problem problem in here. So now I check uh, the power, the voltage which comes from the solar panel. I aimed the modules uh, roughly at the same direction, so the voltage at solar panel could be similar. So let's measure the faulty, faulty one. Okay, this is really tricky. 
second one. Point seven. What? One point. One point seven, and this one has only point seventeen. Wow. So let's measure the last one. 1.7 okay so the first one the faulty one has something really wrong uh, either with uh, the panel or with the charging circuit so this one gives 10 times smaller voltage on the output than the good ones so I have desoldered one wire from solar panel to see uh, whether the fault is in the panel or the electronics and we have the same low voltage years. So I would say that the panel is the reason why this light doesn't work and I don't think it will work anyway because it probably couldn't recharge. And yes, uh, if I connect the perfectly working solar panel to the wrong um, light module, you can see its sensitivity is much bigger. So unfortunately, I was hoping that uh, if uh, the electronics would be bad, uh, I could uh, reuse the solar panel for some different project. But I will have to throw this module out because it has no use for me, unfortunately. And here's the wall. PCB circuit reverse engineered. So uh, when the battery is charging, this chip uh, apparently connects these two pins and uh, voltage from photovoltaic goes directly to battery and when uh, it's night uh, so this uh, IC acts as a DC, DC uh, boost circuit so this inductor is switching on and off and the IC makes from battery which has uh, something about 1.3 volts uh, it makes a voltage for this diode and there's approximately 2 volts and as you can see the circuit is switching at the frequency of 240 kilohertz After a quick search on the internet, uh, I found a lot of schematics with uh, the same chip YX8018. Uh, there's a lot of interesting projects online, so you can take a look on them. Sorry for a little bit short and boring repair video. I have some more interesting devices on my shelf, so next time it will be better. So take a look at my other electronics videos on my channel, subscribe if you like other videos and I will probably thumb down this video myself. See you soon!